everyone um this video we're gonna now uh, step it up a little bit and look at equations in three dimension so the first um, question is how, how do we initiate this three dimension thing um, it's hard to draw it properly but just as with the x and y you add a third axis which is called c and you can imagine it coming out of the plane of the of your screen okay so before we understand what, what things look like what the equations represent let's look at a very simple case what does x equals one look like here now recall that in two dimension if you have x equals one what you get is a vertical line right because what, what this means is you're, you're fixing x to be 1, but y is free to take any value it wants to take. And that makes it a line. So the same sort of logic follows in three dimension, except now you not only have y being able to take a bunch of values, but you also have z being able to take a bunch of values. So what it really represents is a, a plane or a surface. Okay, so try and um, make sure you're convinced that it represents a surface. On this, on the surface, which I've drawn in red, the value of x is one everywhere. But the value of y and z, that's gonna change. All right, now what if it's slightly more complicated and you have something like x plus y plus z equals one? Um, it's gonna be hard to draw and show exactly, but we can draw, we can get an inspiration from two dimension. Now in two dimension, if you had x plus y equals one, what that would be is a straight line of this form where this is 1, 0, and this is 0, 1. Equivalently, in three dimension, it's going to be a plane which sort of looks like that. Um, I'm, I'm just showing the triangle part because that part is easier to visualize. Yeah. So just like this line rests on the two axes, it's like a, it's a plane that or a surface that rests on the three axes. Uh, you don't have to know how to plot these or, um, or even how they look like. The only reason I'm, I'm, I'm showing these is because it, it makes um, understanding what follows next slightly easier. So as before, now if I have two equations, but this time I have it in three variables, then geometrically, what do you get? Now to answer that, recall in two dimension, if I have a blue line and a red line, um, what is gonna happen? If I have a blue line, that's one equation, and I have a red line, one of, one of the cases, which usually is what we would like to happen, is that they meet at a point. which we call the solution. So in three dimension now, if I have two equations, and we have seen that these equations represent planes, right? So the blue one now represents a surface, and the red one represents another surface. then their intersection point right here is no longer a point, but a line. They meet at a line. The easiest way to visualize this is to imagine an open book and the place where they meet, that's the intersection point of two planes. Okay, so this example here is for visualizing. It's, it, it should help you visualize that if you have 
two equations in three variables in three dimension and you try to solve them one of the cases is that they meet at a line so it's not it's not a point it's a line what about three equations now that's where things get interesting if I have three equations now um, I, I already know that two equations meet at a line right so let me copy that um, that's not a paste right there it is so I already know they meet at this white line now if I have this if I have a third third plane um, that third plane is going to meet both of these oh sorry the third plane is going to meet both of them let's say it's a vertical plane of that form then it, it's going to meet this at a point right so eventually then it's going to meet at one point so if I have three equations what this tells me is that I solve two of them and by solving two of them together I end up with a straight line and then I take that straight line and I solve it with the yellow plane and I get one point now separately here if you imagine you have a, a plane and you have a line that goes through it then it's going to meet at this one point So that gives us a strategy on how to solve this kind of system of equations. So how do we do that? Um, if you have three equations, we take two pairs of equations and solve them by eliminating the same variable in both the same variable in both here's what I mean so here there's three equations first I'm going to take the first two okay so I have x plus 4y minus c equals 20 3x plus 2y plus c equals 8 and just by looking at it, I observe that I can eliminate z. Why? Because there's a negative and a positive. So I simply add them through. I get 4x plus 6y equals 28, which again, I would like to point out, as expected, that represents a straight line in two dimension or a plane in three dimension. Now, when I take my second set of equation, um, I again want to eliminate the same variable. So I take equation 2 and 3 now. So I have 3x plus 2y plus c equals 8 and 2x minus 3y plus 2z equals negative 16. Now, I want to eliminate the same variable. So I, I still want to eliminate c. So I multiply this by... 2 and I get my new equation uh, let's write that in blue 6x plus 4y plus 2z equals 16 now in order to eliminate I am going to have to subtract when I subtract the z term gets cancelled and I'm left with negative 4x minus 7y equals negative 32 which once again is a straight line now here is where the previous knowledge of solving equations in two variable comes into play because now we have two lines and we can solve this using our previous method namely I have 4x plus 6y is 28 and negative 4x minus 7y 
is negative 32. Now in this case, we are fortunate that um, these numbers kind of match up. So that if I just add them, the x term gets canceled and I get negative y equals negative 4 or y equals 4. But you may in general have to multiply again to cancel out one of the variables. And now you plug this back in here to get x. So you have 4x plus 24 equals 28, 4x equals 4, and x equals 1. And then you take both of them and you plug it into one of the first ones. So you have x plus 4y, which is 4 times 4, minus c, sorry, x is 1, equals 20. So you get 17 minus c equals 20, or c equals negative 3. So effectively, your solution is, so your solution is 1, 4, negative 3. Okay. Or you can say x equals 1, y equals 4, z equals negative 3. Now an important part here is verifying that it's the right solution. I'm going to leave this part to you. What this means is I'll show you one of them. It means that if I put this into the third equation, say, third equation says that whatever my solution is, 2x minus 3y plus 2z, should equal negative 16. So let's check. 2 times 1 minus 3 times 4 plus 2 times negative 3 is 2 minus 12 minus 6, which is 2 minus 18, which is negative 16. So do for um, first and second. Okay, so Take a look at it and try and do for first and second equation and that's going to, that's it, that will be a good practice for you to verify. Okay, let's look at one more example. Um, so at this point you can pause the video and try this on your own. First I'm going to take these two, so I have 2x plus 5y plus c equals 12 x minus 2y plus 4c equals negative 10. In this case, um, I do have to perform some multiplication. So let's say I want to multiply this by 4, and I get 8x plus 20y plus 4c equals 48. Subtract. The 4z cancel out, negative 7x minus 22y equals negative 58. Then I take the second and the third, so I have x minus 2y plus 4z equals negative 10, negative 3x plus 6y minus 12z equals 20. Then you multiply the top one by three. Oh, I should put this here. Um, you have, oh, wait a second. So again, here you have to be a little careful. Um, I eliminated C, so I have to be consistent with eliminating C. So multiply three, three X minus six Y plus 12 C equals negative 30. Now here when I add, something odd happens. I get 0 equals negative 10, which is obviously untrue. Now in case of the two dimension, we said that that represents parallel lines, which means by extending it, this represents parallel planes or surfaces. Okay, so here too, the conclusion that you're going to draw is that there is no 
solution. So what's happening here? What's happening here is that you have a plane and then the other equation is also a plane but it's exactly parallel to the blue one. So there is no solution. And the third equation is a plane that goes through both of them. Right? But there is no solution. Why? Because you cannot find any point which is on the yellow, the bl blue and the red curve not curve, but the plane at the same time. And that happens because the blue and the red are parallel, which automatically um, indicates that it's a no solution scenario. So that's all with um, equations with three variable.